Hey everybody. Today we're doing some basic data wrangling in R using the filter command. This is a powerful but user-friendly tool for subsetting rows in a data frame. Basically, throwing out observations you don't need, the ones that don't meet some specified criteria. Um, this is part of the dplyr package, sometimes pronounced dplyr, in the tidyverse family of packages. If you haven't already done so, I recommend installing all of those packages on your machine right away using the command install.packages, parenthesis quote, tidyverse. Okay, enough with that. Let's swap over to R and see how this works. So I already have tidyverse installed, so I'm just going to load it up with library tidyverse. There we go. And you'll see that it's going to load eight packages in total, um, including dplyr. Um, also notice we're getting things like ggplot2, tidyr, and readr. So lots of good stuff in there. It'll all be useful to you over time in your R career. In this vid, I want to start by looking at the MT cars data set. MT cars, there we go. We'll just take a look at it. This is a this is a standard data set. It comes built in with R. It has 32 observations of different cars, showing information like miles per gallon, cylinders, and engine displacement. So suppose that we're only interested in cars that have six cylinders, not four or eight or any other number. We're going to use the filter command to get a data frame that only includes cars with six cylinders. The filter command takes a data frame as its first input, as its first argument, and gives you back a data frame in the end. It does not modify the original data frame that you put in. If you want to do that, you have to intentionally reassign the output to that same data frame name. OK, so um, let's get to it. Let's filter the empty cars data set so that cylinders are exactly six. So notice the natural syntax here. First, the name of the data frame, then the condition. I didn't have to put quotes around the name of the variable, which is nice. That's generally true in all of the tidyverse packages. Notice, however, that I did still use the double equal sign to indicate logical equality. Cylinders is equal to six as opposed to a single equal sign, which tends to mean assignment or specifying an argument within a function. Now, of course, as I mentioned a moment ago, the output here is going to be a data frame. So I probably don't want to just hit return right now. Um, I don't generally want to see the data frame in the console. So let's assign this output to a new name. How about small? And then we can view that if we like. OK, so now we have a data frame that only has seven rows as opposed to the MT cars data frame that had 32. And in each case, we have a six cylinder car. Great. So um, let's see here. Let's do another one. This time, I'll just enclose the filter command in the inside of a view so that I don't actually have to assign a variable again. Um, this time, let's have cars that have no more than six cylinders. OK, so there's 18 of those. If we like, we can add a condition. So let's have cars that are no more than six cylinders and whose miles per gallon is, for example, uh, let's say at least 22. So nine of those. OK, so um, this isn't really the greatest syntax. You have to read this in a fairly awkward fashion. Um, there's kind of a sandwich thing going on here. Take the empty cars data set, then filter it, then view it. So we're kind of reading from the inside out. A better way to write this is using the pipe operator. So let's do it that way. Empty cars, pipe it in to the filter command. So what this is doing is it's taking the argument empty cars, the data frame, and using it as the first argument in this next command. So filter empty cars, now I just have to put this, I just have to specify how I want to filter it. So um, let's do cylinders that are no more than six. And this time let's do or. So um, less than or equal to six or MPG greater than or equal to 22. So that vertical line is going to be the or command. OK, so right now, if I just hit return, it's going to print this out in the console again. So let's pipe this into the view command. 
And there we go. We have 18 entries in this case. Um, these, this pipe operator is very useful. Um, for instance, we don't have to throw this result into a view command. We can immediately turn around and get a plot. So let's just quickly get a ggplot using this data frame. So that's already specified as the first argument here. We just have to mention aesthetics. So let's let x be weight and let's let y be mpg. And we'll do a scatter plot. So geom, geom underscore point. There we go. Okay, um, I want to do one more thing, one more example, and this time I am going to use the Star Wars data set. Star Wars, of course, not having a D. I didn't know that. I am a nerd. Um, okay, so here we have 87 observations. These are corresponding to characters in the Star Wars universe. It's only looking at the movies, and I think it only goes up to The Force Awakens. So, yeah. And this is built in with one of the um, tidyverse packages. I forget exactly which. It might even be dplyr. So um, let's filter this using one of these um, variables that corresponds to character vectors. OK, so um, let's take Star Wars and pipe that in to a filter command. And um, let's do, let's just get humans. So that's species, not capitalized. Human is capitalized, species is not. OK. And then for the moment, we'll just pipe that into the view command. OK, so only 35 humans in the mainline Star Wars movies leading up to The Force Awakens. Um, notice, by the way, that there are some um, entries in this data frame where the species is an NA. There's a few of them right there. OK, so suppose we want to find out which um, characters in the Star Wars universe have a species that is not known or not specified in some way. It might seem like the natural thing to do is to just do species equals quote NA. But as you can see here, we're not getting ent any entries out of that. That's because NA isn't a character vector here. It's actually just specifying that there's not actually a value. So the syntax we need here is a little bit different. We actually want to use the command is.na and then the name of the variable, so species. Notice we aren't specifying the name of the data frame. That's specified by the first argument of the filter command, specified out here in front of the pipe. OK. So here are the four characters, including Phasma, th whose species is not known or is not specified. And we can see that right here. Of course, if we want to know the ones where the species is not an NA, we need this exclamation point for the not syntax. And of course, 87 um, characters in total in the Star Wars data set, four where we have an NA for species, so 83 left. Um, Let's see here. One last thing. Let's look at Skywalkers. So Luke Skywalker, for instance. So um, let's go back inside this filter command. We want to deal with a name. And the first thing that we might try is just name equals Skywalker. Empty data set, because of course, the name here is Luke Skywalker. So we're not really interested in the subset of this data frame where the name is exactly Skywalker. We're interested in the subset of the data set where the name contains Skywalker. OK, so the syntax we need for that is actually a little bit different. It's um, string detect. And this is from the stringer package, which is naturally enough loaded up in the tidyverse. So it's uh, str under detect. -E and then we put in the variable name, which again here is name, and um, then the subset that we're interested in, so Skywalker. And we'll take a look at that new data frame. And in this case, we get all three Skywalkers that were known up until that point, Luke, Anakin, and Shmi. And you can see that that's all there are up till that point in the Star Wars universe. OK, so that's just a little bit of what you can do with the filter command. Um, it's uh, 
plenty to get you started. I urge you to explore it on your own as soon as possible.